let's study 10th standard ICAC chemistry chapter 7a hydrogen chloride hydrogen chloride gas is an acidic gas it's formula is HCl it can be prepared in various ways one method is direct combination or synthesis we use moist hydrogen gas and react it with chlorine in the presence of diffused sunlight to give you the hydrogen chloride gas this is in the gaseous state only when dissolved in water do we call it hydrochloric acid. We must use diffuse sunlight because in direct sunlight it is very explosive and in dark the reaction is very negligible. Moist hydrogen should be used because the moisture acts as a catalyst. Another method to prepare hydrogen chloride gas is when a less volatile acid displaces a more volatile one. Conch sulfuric acid is non-volatile or less volatile because its boiling point is comparatively higher compared to HCl and HNO3. So when you react conch H2SO4 with some metallic chloride like sodium chloride or potassium chloride and you heat it at a temperature less than 200 degrees Celsius, we get the HCl gas along with the metallic bisulfate which is sodium bisulfate in this case. If we increase the temperature to more than 200 degrees Celsius, then instead of sodium bisulfate, we shall, we shall get sodium sulfate, which will stick to the glass of the apparatus. And the crust is difficult to remove, so we avoid that. Also, by keeping the temperature less than 200 degrees Celsius, we are saving fuel, preventing the glass from cracking. So in this diagram, we see that we have a round bottom flask being heated, solution of sodium chloride. Conch sulfuric acid is being introduced via the thistle funnel. Make sure that the end of the thistle funnel is dipped in the solution so that the hydrogen doesn't escape through the thistle funnel. The hydrogen should escape only via this delivery tube. And we should pass it through conch sulfuric acid, which acts like a drying agent. Whatever moisture comes along with HCl is absorbed by it. So we get dry HCl and we can collect it in this jar. Now HCl gas is quite dense, it is heavier than air, so it is collected by the upward displacement of air. As HCl fills the jar, the air which was previously there in this jar is kicked out. We can be sure that the jar is filled with HCl gas by doing the test for HCl. If you dip a glass rod in ammonium hydroxide solution, that is ammonia solution, and you bring it in the HCl, you will get dense white fumes. You see, ammonia reacts with HCl to give you ammonium chloride, due to which we see dense white fumes, since ammonium chloride is a sublimatory substance. Now, the reason why we do not collect it uh, in water is because it is highly soluble in water. Also, we have to use conch sulfuric acid only. We should not use conch nitric acid, because nitric acid is quite volatile. So, even nitric acid vapors may evaporate along with HCl gas. The metallic solid which is preferred is sodium chloride because it is abundantly available. Now this is a reaction when the temperature is more than 200 degrees Celsius which is avoided. Next the physical properties of hydrogen chloride gas. It's colorless, pungent, slightly sour to taste because it's an acid. When HCl gas is released in the atmosphere, we see some white fumes. That's because the HCl gas is highly soluble in water. So when it dissolves in the moisture of water, tiny droplets of HCl acid is produced in the air. That is why we see a few. Now there is an experiment to prove that HCl gas, gas is heavier than air. Suppose the jar is filled with HCl gas. Now you just pour it over. Yeah, it's a gas, but we can pour it in a beaker or an empty jar where a candle was burning. You will notice that the candle gets extinguished because the HCl gas has replaced all the air. All the air has been pushed out. This is called upward displacement of air and that is possible only if the HCl gas is heavier than air. Next, the fountain experiment proves that HCl gas is highly soluble in water. We start with an inverted round bottom flask. The mouth of the flask has a rubber stopper with two tiny holes. 
exactly fitting a dropper and a jet tube. The jet tube is dipped in a blue litmus solution. Initially the flask is empty and it should be dry. It should be empty of any moisture and air but it should have only dry HCl gas. So I'm stressing on the word dry here that is the flask should be dry as well as HCl gas should be dry. There should be no moisture only then this experiment will be successful. The dropper has water in it but there is no water in the flask. It's devoid of it. When you press the dropper the water is released into the neck of the flask. Immediately the HCl gas which filled the flask gets absorbed in it and it is so highly soluble in water that a partial vacuum is created inside the flask due to which the external air pressure now being comparatively greater pushes the blue litmus solution up into the jet tube which comes out like a fountain. In fact the color of the litmus solution is now red because HCl is acidic. So this clearly shows how soluble HCl is in water. That is dry HCl is very soluble in water. Next let's talk about the chemical properties of hydrogen chloride gas. It's non-combustible. It's a non-supporter of combustion. It extinguishes a burning splint but that is not a chemical test. It's acidic so it will change the color of certain indicators as shown in the table. And it undergoes thermal dissociation that is if you heat HCl gas to a temperature greater than 500 degrees Celsius you will get hydrogen and chlorine gases but this is a reversible reaction hence the term dissociation. Now let's study some reactions of hydrogen chloride gas as, as already discussed when ammonia gas that is a basic gas reacts with HCl they combine to form ammonium chloride and hence we see dense white fumes. Similarly HCl gas reacts with some active metals as well. A simple displacement reaction takes place to give you the respective salts that is the chlorides and hydrogen gas is released. Now let's study how hydrochloric acid is prepared from HCl gas. Now it should be straightforward we should just dissolve HCl gas in water so that it becomes HCl acid but there is a challenge here. Since HCl is highly soluble in water when you try to dissolve it using the normal tube quickly back suction takes place that is the water rises up into the tube. That's because HCl dissolves so quickly that a vacuum is created inside the tube and as you know if the, there is a vacuum inside then the external air pressure being comparatively greater will push the water into the tube and it may even damage the apparatus ahead. So to reduce this back suction we use a special funnel arrangement. The rim of the special funnel is touching the water surface, just touching the water surface. This increases the surface area of dissolution first of all and also now when HCl gas is dissolved in the water, back suction is minimum because the moment water rises up, a lot of water would rise up to a small height. So the level of water in the beaker will decrease. So there will be an air gap in between. Soon the pressure inside and outside will become equal and then due to gravity this water will fall down again. And when the water falls down into the beaker, the level of water in the beaker rises and once again it is in contact with the funnel. Then once again the HCl will dissolve in it, the water will be sucked up, but then an air gap will be formed in between and so on. The process continues. So this minimizes back suction and HCl acid can be produced efficiently. Next, the physical properties of HCl gas. It's a colorless gas. It's slightly pungent odor. <clears throat> I'm sorry, this is the acid. But the properties are almost same. It has a sharp, sour taste. Now, the boiling point of HCl is 109.8 degrees Celsius. It is quite volatile because the boiling point is not that great, unlike sulfuric acid. It's not that high. Now, it forms a constant boiling mixture at this temperature. And in this case, the solution with water will have 22.2% by weight of HCl. 
if you want HCl to be more concentrated and if you try to boil the HCl acid hoping that the water will evaporate so the concentration of HCl in it will increase but it won't work because beyond this point the proportion of HCl vapors evaporating is to the water vapors evaporating is the same as the ratio of HCl and water in the liquid. So in the, in the HCl acid, the percentage of HCl was 22.2%. Beyond this, if I boil the HCl acid, then out of all the vapors which evaporate, which is of HCl and water both, again, 22.2% of all the vapors will be of HCl. So you are simply losing HCl without concentrating the solution. So there is no point in boiling it beyond this. If you want to concentrate HCl, then we'll have to use some different method. For example, by distilling or using other mechanisms in which the acid is not lost. Now, let's try the chemical properties of hydrochloric acid. We know that hydrochloric acid ionizes in water. It should not be dissociates. It ionizes to give one hydrogen ion per molecule. So it's monobasic acid. It can dissolve in water because it's a polar covalent compound and even water is polar covalent compound and like dissolves like. So water will be able to break the bond between H and Cl to give you H plus and Cl minus ions. Of course, in the solution, H plus won't exist as it is. It will attach to the water to form hydronium ions. Now, hydrogen chloride solution in toluene. Here, toluene will not ionize HCl because Toluene is an organic compound. It's a non-polar compound. So there will be no hydrogen and chlorine ions produced. So it will not show any acidic properties because acidic properties are dependent on H plus ions. Also, it's a non-electrolyte. Elec the electricity cannot flow through it because there are no mo movable ions in it. Now, some typical properties of a dilute acid. A dilute acid usually reacts with active metal to give salt plus hydrogen. With the base, neutralization takes place to give you salt and water only. With carbonates and bicarbonates, it gives you carbon dioxide gas. With sulfites and bisulfites, it gives you sulfur dioxide gas. And with a sulfide, it gives hydrogen sulfide gas. So for dilute HCl, we can see these respective reactions with active metal, hydrogen. With any base, salt and water. Carbonates and bicarbonates give carbon dioxide apart from salt and water. Sulfites and bisulfites, apart from salt and water, gives SO2 gas. And finally, sulfides give the hydrogen sulfide gas. Observations should be remembered. For example, copper sulfide, which is black, will give you copper chloride, which is blue. Also, for H2S, you can write the observation that a colorless gas is released, which turns moist lead acetate paper silvery black. Now, a few more reactions to be remembered is that the nitrates also react with HCl to give you the respective chlorides plus nitric acid. And these chlorides are precipitates. Remember, silver chloride is white PPT and PBCl2 is white PPT. Now this can be used as a test for HCl. If you have an acid and you need to be sure that it's HCl, just add silver nitrate. If you see a white precipitate, it is. Now let's study the reaction with the oxidizing agents. This table gives us five oxidizing agents. The last two are not very important so you can just read them notice that in all these reactions we have to mention conch for hcl so when conch hcl reacts with these oxidizing agents we get salt and water and chlorine gas that is a greenish yellow gas which would turn moist starch iodide paper blue black proving that it's chlorine gas and this proves that hcl does have chlorine gas then we study about aqua regia a combination of two acids but we'll study this in detail on the next page when we study the tests for hydrochloric acid we should remember that there are three independent tests one for vapors of hcl acid one for dilute hcl and one for conch hcl understand the difference between them now earlier when i said that a white precipitate with silver nitrate would indicate that the acid is HCl but we need to elaborate further that the white precipitate is soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide but insoluble in nitric acid. So here's the test I was talking about. It works for dilute HCl. 
And remember, this white PPT is soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide, but insoluble in nitric acid. Here, we see that the white PPT is soluble in ammonium hydroxide. It forms a complex salt, diamine silver chloride. We know the other test as well, that is, if a glass rod is dipped in ammonium hydroxide, that is ammonia solution, and brought near HCl vapors, we'll get dense white fumes. Now, if you want to test for conch HCl, there is just one test for conch HCl. You have to heat it with manganese dioxide, which is an oxidizing agent. So here, a greenish yellow gas will be released, as well as a brown residue is formed. So these two observations prove that it is conch HCl. And this reaction clearly shows that HCl has chlorine in it. Now the uses of hydrochloric acid. One interesting use is that when you have a mixture of conch nitric acid and conch HCl in the ratio 1, ratio 3, that mixture is called aqua regia. It is so powerful that it can even dissolve noble gases. What happens is that aqua regia, when dissolved in water, gives you nascent chlorine. Now nascent chlorine, that is single chlorine atoms, now, chlorine atoms are unstable, their octet is not complete. So they are very reactive and they can attack the noble metal to form the respective chlorides which are soluble in water. Hi students, this is AJ sir. If you like this video, press the like button. If you would like to enroll for my online test series or online lectures, email me or message me on Instagram. Check the description for more information.